If you managed to catch some of Prehistoric Planet, you may have seen the antics of the featured dune jumper Mononychus as it skittered around looking for bugs to eat. This owl-like critter belongs to a group of bizarre small dinosaurs that continue to grow in number as new ones are uncovered from the sands of the Gobi Desert and a brand new one has just been published that fills in a hole in the group's evolution. Let's meet Jaculonychus. The Alvarosaurs are a group of small theropod dinosaurs that are often overlooked. This is partly due to their generally low diversity compared with other theropod dinosaurs, and also because they're all small animals and therefore don't attract as much attention as the giant, monstrous animals they lived with. However, their anatomy alone makes them far more bizarre than most groups of dinosaurs. Another possible reason is that they are relatively new to scientific understanding with the first ones described in the early 1990s. Some may have been found before this, but were not recognized for what they are now. Thankfully, as more are found, they are becoming more widely known. Prehistoric planet's use of Mononychus has also helped this group's popularity tremendously. In short, these dinosaurs are small, gangly theropods that were the earliest to diverge from the huge Manoraptor group, the group which contains all birds, raptors, egg thieves, and sloth dinos. As such, one would assume they would have more bird-like anatomy than most other groups of non-bird theropod dinosaurs, and unsurprisingly they do. Their uniqueness comes with their tiny arms which have shrunk and broadened into anteater-like pickaxes. Many have reduced fingers so that there is just one huge claw and a bunch of tiny fingers, with the last, most advanced of them losing all but the giant claw. They also had narrow, bird-like skulls with enormous nocturnal eyes, really tiny bug-crunching teeth, and asymmetrical owl-like ears. Their limbs were super long and skinny with short thigh bones and super long skinny infused calf and ankle bones for jumping and running across dunes, plains, and forests. They're known from North America and South America, Europe, and Asia. Despite the recent increase in the fossil record of alvarosaurids, a detailed anatomy of members is still limited due in part because most of the fossil remains are fragmentary. This often leads to difficulty in interpreting their ecology and evolutionary relationships. A brand new alvarosaur, specimen MPCD 100-209, has been described by Kota Kobal, Yoshitsugu Kobayashi, Sakbatar Chinzorig, and Kashikjev Sakbatar in a November 2023 paper published in Plus One, which was recovered from the upper section of the possibly Campanian aged Barungayot formation in the Nemect locality of Mongolia. The specimen is a nearly complete skeleton with a skull, only missing some bits of that skull, plus some neck, back, and tail vertebrae, the sternum and furcula, and some fingers. It's a beautiful specimen even preserving the animal in a bird-like sleeping position at the time of death, a position which is identical to the two other known theropod dinosaurs found in a sleeping position, May and Sinornithoides, thus reinforcing the hypothesis that this sleeping position evolved before birds did or convergently evolved among different dinosaur groups multiple times. The research team named the animal Jaculonychus yaruai, with Jaculi from Jaculus, a tiny dragon from Greek myth, and Onychus meaning claw. The species name Yaruai is derived from the Mongolian word Yaru, meaning speedy or hasty. Let's bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planets the Most Extreme to get an idea of how small this critter was. Since the specimen of Jaculonychus is mostly complete, not much is needed to fill in the missing pieces and the critter can more accurately just be physically measured, resulting in a little guy of about 70-ish centimeters or 27 inches, depending on the critter's neutral pose. This is about average size for these critters. Thanks, Mr. Man. Jaculonychus represents one of the most complete alvarosaur skeletons reported so far. 
In order to be definitive about the age of a fossil animal at the time of death, you usually perform histological analyses, wherein you cut a slice out of a bone that shows growth patterns, glue it to a glass slide, and then polish and cut it down into a thin chip, and then put it under the microscope to describe any microscopic features. This was not performed with a Jaculonychus, but the research team was able to identify the animal as a matured individual, near skeletal maturity due to the closure of the skull and vertebral bones plus fusing of some of the other skeletal elements. What kind of adult animal was it? When all of the anatomical traits of Jaculonychus were tallied up and placed within the phylogenetic software of the researcher's choice, they found that the animal placed most closely to Shivuya, another small form of Alvarosaur from the same area and time. Both of these animals formed a close group with Mononychus. The addition of Jaculonychus brings the total of Mongolian Nemect Basin Alphorosaurs to nine, with the cast consisting of Shavuya, Kol, Parvicursor, Ceratonychus, Ondogervel, Kulsanurus, Mononychus, and Nemectonychus. Jaculonychus is therefore in addition to a remarkable diversity of late branching alvarosaurids in the Nemect Basin, which bears the Tajokta, Barungayot, and Nemect formations. The Jadokta and Barungayot formations, where the former represents mostly wind-driven dune deposits and the latter both wind and water-driven dune deposits, have been interpreted as drier environments than the Nemect formation, which is dominated by river and water-driven dune plain deposits. The Alvarez sword material is abundant in the former two formations, but scarce in the Nemect formation previously implying that they preferred dry habitats rather than wet ones. The evolutionary relationships of late branching alvarosaurids demonstrate two clusters that lived in arid to semi-arid environments, such as the grouping of Jaculonychus and Shivuya, as well as the group including Linonychus from the Wulansuhai formation in Inner Mongolia, which is characterized by dune deposits. However, their inferred habitats are not clustered significantly by whether they lived in arid or non-arid environments. Multiple Alvarez sword specimens, including Nemectonychus from the Nemect formation, don't show a definitively lower Alvarez sword diversity and abundance in the Nemect formation than in the other two formations. These suggest that alvarosaurids in the Nemect basin were successfully adapted for both arid and non-arid environments rather than the older idea of them being desert specialists. On top of that, the overlying ecological groups of animals between the Jodokta, Barungayot, and Nemect formations, which includes non-avian dinosaurs, birds, and mammals, suggest that the stratigraphic relationships between these three formations in the Nemect basin perhaps represents a lateral transition order during a short and coeval time, rather than a chronostratigraphic order. From what I understand of the terminology here, it sounds like the author team are suggesting that some of these layers were continuous with one another, and then shifted sideways and sort of up and down, making it seem like some of these animals are older or younger than they are, but actually may have belonged to similar times. Therefore, late branching alvarosaurids represent the characteristic dinosaur groups in the Nemect Basin bearing both arid and wet environments and likely diversify during a relatively short span of the late Cretaceous in this area. The hand of late branching alvarosaurids is the most strikingly specialized part of their skeleton. The evolutionary sequence of alvarosaurs documents that finger reduction and enlargement of the thumb have occurred in a stepwise manner, which suggests a functional shift from grasping to digging. The Jurassic forms possess a hand retaining grasping function, as in typical theropods. Then non-alvarosaurid, alvarosauroids of the early Cretaceous, like Bonicus, modified the hand with a super huge first digit, with the rest of the fingers short and stubby. Finally, the late branching alvarosaurids acquired a highly specialized hand with only one functional finger and extremely reduced other fingers at least since the early late Cretaceous. Notably, 
Jaculonychus has only two fingers, although the hand elements of both sides are incompletely preserved. Due to these features, the hand of Jaculonychus possibly possesses only a single extra finger, suggesting an intermediate condition between Shuvuya with two extra fingers and Linonychus with none. This illustrates another example of an extreme finger reduction within alvarosaurids, as well as confirms their variations in vestigial fingers proposed by many other researchers. The hand parts of Jaculonychus's hand are more similar to those in earlier alvarosaurs, indicating a mosaic of primitive and advanced features, highlighting a more complex evolutionary history in alvarosaur hands than previously thought. With its unique anatomy and evolutionary placement settled, what is there to learn from how the animal was preserved? The posture of Jaculonychus preserves the hind limbs folded on either side of the body, the left forelimb folded next to the body with the elbow, the neck curved posteriorly on the right side of the body, and the tail positioned on the left side and curled around the flexed hind limbs to the right. Despite displacements of both forelimb elements of Jaculonychus, these bones are tucked underneath the body as in the hind limb. This posture obviously differs from the opistotonic posture commonly seen in theropod dinosaurs, in which the body lies on one side with both neck and tail arched dorsally. The specimen was dorsoventrally crushed during or after burial, and this seems to have resulted in twisted displacement of the back half of the body and sideways displacement of forelimb elements and tail vertebrae. However, the articulation of most skeletal bits and positions of all the bones without significant deviations from their original positions suggest relatively little effect of decay or transport prior to burial. In other words, it doesn't seem like its body got messed with after it died. Given this condition, the researchers infer that the position of the skeleton reflects a sleeping posture prior to death or burial. This posture is identical to the tuck-in sleeping posture seen in troodontids and potentially oviraptorids. What does this positioning mean? Jaculonychus newly demonstrates the evolution of avian behavior, or perhaps physiological states in non-avian dinosaurs. Although the crouched posture is also preserved in the alvarosaurs albinicus and perhaps haplochirus, which represents folded hind limbs under the pelvis, the former is only preserved in the pelvis and hind limbs, and the latter shows its neck and tail unfolded. The posture of Shivuya can be more similar to that of Jaculonychus than the two others, where its neck curves backward on the left side and its hind limbs are partially folded. But the specimen is incomplete. Thus, the posture of Jaculonychus displays the first clear record of the avian tuck-in behavior among alvarosaurs. The specific sleeping behavior of modern birds, which involves tucking their heads between one of their forelimbs and their torso, is usually thought to be for staying warm. While the crouched postures, similar to birds and some mammals, are present in theropods and also in early sauropodomorphs and ornithischian dinosaurs, the definitive evidence of the avian-style tuck-in sleeping posture has only been found in the troodontids, may and cynornithoides. An avian-like sleeping posture in Jaculonychus confirms that this avian-like behavior was already present in Maneraptorans prior to Paravians. Since small vertebrates with high surface-to-volume ratios tend to show specific behaviors for staying warm, the presence of this avian-like behavior in alvarosaurs and Paravians is likely associated with the miniaturization of body size that both lineages underwent independently. From the evolutionary position of Jaculonychus, this discovery further supports the hypothesis that alvarosaur feathers may be more complex structures with a central rachis like those seen in ornithomimosaurs and other maneraptorans for thermoregulation, display, and reproduction, rather than the simple filamentous structures previously hypothesized. 
In either case, these behavioral and physiological implications suggest that the evolutionary processes leading to avian features had proceeded in non-avian dinosaurs, especially Manoraptorans, prior to the origin of powered flight. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.